Dave, I'm here. Hello, everybody.
Hey, David. Hey, Shamla. How are you? Good. How's it going? It's the weekend. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. It's true. That's true. Recha have you been? Recharging the batteries. I have been, for sure. I've been relaxing. But of course, the family's still around, so more to come before the weekend is over. Have you how have you been? I'm doing great. Doing great. Traveling a lot, I'm sure. Yes, yes. And I got one more trip before the end of the month. And then I'm then I'm into July where I only have one trip, which is great. Hey. Well, if I if I can do anything to change that and make you come have you come to Austin, we'll do that too. I know I'm planning something. Um I'm planning something. With diversity, but uh, in a couple of other companies, but I'll I'll, I'll bring up to speed on that. Sure, sounds great. Okay. So I'm excited to gotta, hear from have Ryan. Mike Anderson come down too. I have to have him come down. Oh yeah, yeah, he's fun. He's a lot of fun. Uh, so look, it looks uh, look like we're picking up people, but I'm waiting still for Ryan to get here. He's he's connecting oh, he right now. Looks like mm -hmm. he just he just joined. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, 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 good. I thought I should at least brush my hair. Uh, sure. <laughs> hey, you you represent the upper echelon. <laughs> you represent the executive core. So glad to glad to have you here. Yeah. Let me see. I see you here, Ryan. I see you're here. Yeah. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. I'd love to see you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, only a little pressure, Ryan. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's a we're about two minutes after, but we're going to get going in a couple of seconds. So uh, anyway, Ryan, you and I had a good conversation leading up to today, which is great. As always, as always, appreciate uh, what you're doing in your time. Yeah. So, good, 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 good. All right, so look, um, we've got a few folks here. Um, I know we have some free stuff that we, free things that we always do. And um, anybody who wants to, you should come off, um, come off, uh, uh, of, um, come off being invisible. And let's see your, let's see your smiling face, Ryan. I especially hope that you'll come off so that we can. No, see absolutely. Uh, Build this certain video. But in the meantime, while you're working on that, I'm going to go ahead and go through our normal preamble, so to speak. Today is uh, Saturday, June 25th, and today we're speaking with Ryan Higgins who happens to be the CISO for the Department of Commerce and the Deputy CIO. I'm Dave Elcock, and I usually moderate these conversations, but we always have guest speakers. Hey, we have a guest today too, Shamla Naidu, who is formerly the, um, formerly the managing partner with IBM, but now the head of cloud strategy for the rapidly rising Netscope, Shamla. Why don't you say hi to all these folks who do and don't know you, but give us a, just say hi to them. Absolutely. It is my pleasure to be here. You know, uh, for those of you who know me, you know, I have a 40 year career in technology. And now as I get to the tail end of my kind of corporate career, I have a whole portfolio of things that I do, but, you know, there's no higher calling for me than to make those around me better. And so partnering with David, um, I'm happy to, you know, be here and be a resource for any of you. If I can be helpful, you know, just let me know. Great. Thanks, Shamla. And thanks for coming. Appreciate it very much. We'll talk about some of the things Shamla and I are doing later. But right now we're talking about Cyversity. You guys are familiar with Cyversity. It's an organization, a nonprofit, a national nonprofit focused on um, women and minorities, advocating for women and minorities in cybersecurity. And of course, they do that through programs that are most often designed to 
uh, create recruitment to foster inclusion, equity, retention, and, and belonging, and all of those things that are necessary for women and minorities to be, not only be in cybersecurity, but to be uh, feel welcome and to succeed and overcome. And a lot of that we're gonna talk about today uh, with Ryan on the call. Um, we're, we st we're a mentor organization, started in January of this year to become a mentor organization where students invest in themselves $20 a year to do so and professionals invest $100 a year in there to be, to be um, members. And of course, through that, there are quite a few, um, there are quite a few advantages to that, uh, benefits, if you will, that come with that membership. Career exploration, some of which we see on cyberseek.org, um, cybersecurity skills and assessments, uh, Competency Core happens to be the, the, the tool that they use today, where they develop, help you develop your career through engage events, scholarships, training, mentoring, some of you are already involved in that. And of course, um, connecting through networks and local chapters, of which I happen to be the, uh, pardon me, the, my, the internet is weak on my side. Okay, that's, what, that's okay, Trenis. Thank you for being here as well. Appreciate it very much through networking and local chapter development. Of course, I'm the vice president of the Texas chapter. And um, I'm not sure if my colleague Bennett is here, but uh, he's the president of the Texas chapter, I'm trying to find my mouse. <laughs> there it is. Um, come on now, there you go. All right, so a lot of the areas that we discuss focused on topic areas such as career development, career spotlighting, transitions in career, leaderships, and tech talks. And of course, we'll have some of that conversation today. Throughout the year, we focused on quite a few highlighting events. Of course, you remember Black History Month. I say remember because it's still part of our ongoing year, yearly uh, concerns about Black History Month, Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. This is June, LGB Pride uh, Month as well. Uh, in September, and uh, we have Hispanic Latino Heritage Month, and I'll uh, talk to you about who's going to be speaking in September, uh, a very astute and um, high-level executive uh, from the industry. In October, it's Cybersecurity Awareness. Of course, November and December, Native American Heritage, veterans, uh, military veterans, and disabled, uh, dis disabled veterans. You all that are here pr pretty much know the ground rules. It's a 60 minute plus conversation focusing on leadership, diversity, inclusion, um, the career development, uh, career uh, growth. Uh, it's gonna be a question and answer period. So please uh, you know, be, you know, be prepared to have and ask your questions um, by just coming off mute and asking your questions or putting them in the chat box. I'd rather you just come off mute and ask those questions so you can speak to Ryan directly. This session is being recorded, but you know that because it, uh, I told you that just at the beginning. At the end of each one of our sessions, we actually have a link and I'll put it in the chat so all of you can look at the link um, and respond to the link and give us a response to the survey that's there. It's like three or four minute survey. Usually I know when they say three or four minute survey, it turns into a 20 minute thing, but not in this case. So just uh, give your response. You know, the, we've got a lineup. This line, 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 line. And that person and put them to sleep. Um, um, going out through at the end of the year, we've still got a full lineup. Today's Ryan. Next uh, month, it'll be uh, Kiana Hicks, who's the founder of Pathway Forward. Very interesting conversation there. Heather Grant, if you want to hear somebody who has gone through trials and tribulations and succeeded, the CISO of SailPoint, Heather Grant, will we'll, we'll have that conversation. And as I mentioned in September, Guillermo Diaz, who happens to be the chairman of the Hispanic Information Technology Executive uh, uh, Council is going to be here during that month of September, highlighting Hispanic Heritage Month. And then in October, Daniel DeSillo, who happens to be the <coughs> cloud, sales, cloud Sales Center Solutions Architect, Senior Leader for, uh, at, for Amazon is going to be as well. I don't see her the thing there. And then preparing for next year already, Chairman of Cyversity, uh, Julian Waits will be here. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that July 20, June 29th, a couple days from now, the New York chapter is going to be having a, a focus on cybersecurity investigation uh, and incident response careers. They're going to have speakers from uh, Goodwin and Proctor, 
a special agent from the FBI. It's going to be moderated by the uh, by Kirby Brown, who happens to be one of the leaders of the New York um, group. Now to who we're going to be interviewing today, uh, Brian Brian Higgins, handsome gentleman, a beautiful uh, personality, and great um, great leader, if you will, in the security space. He's got a great story to tell about how he's come to us, how he's gotten here, how he's developed, and obviously some admonitions for us, um, who, who, all of you who are going through your career path. Um, this is a good time to talk to someone who has been like us, has gone through the challenges, gone through the changes, um, and has come to a level of accomplishment that most of us aspire to. So I'm going to stop sharing and just um, put my face up there so that uh, everyone. And there's Mr. Ryan Higgins hey, here today. All right. Try my best. Try my best. All right. So there's somebody who's given given us a little bit of a feedback here. Um, hey, oh, Shane, that's a new picture. Hello, Ryan. That's a nice picture. That's a new one. That's a nice picture, buddy. I love wow. that picture. So I am going to mute everybody. Everybody's muted for now. Great. Okay. Great, 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 great. Well, listen, All right. how's the audio? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you well. Uh, any, anybody have a challenge hearing Ryan? Put your, put your finger up. No, everybody's good. Good. All right, so Video's here. okay as well. I'm gonna get out of here. That's good. Okay. You're good, Ryan. Thank well, you. listen, um, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, before getting started, I uh, just want to thank you and the team at Cyversity for, of course, affording me uh, an opportunity to kind of share some thoughts with you this afternoon. Um, as you already know and that I've shared with you, I really appreciate what uh, you and the team at Cyversity has done, uh, what you've developed, and what you continue to cultivate. I think this is something I certainly would have benefited uh, uh, along my the early parts of my journey uh, coming into the field. Um, also, while I am employed at the Department of Commerce, uh, the comments and opinions that I share this afternoon are solely my own um, and do not express the views of my employer. I just want to make sure that that was clear. Um, before kind of jumping into the discussion, uh, I thought it was also appropriate to kind of share the context for kind of how and why I'm here this afternoon. Um, and, and at some point in our lives, you know, you, you, you come to that point where, you know, you have a situation where you've lived more lives and more years than you have left, right? Uh, and when you come to that realization, uh, it becomes less about what you're trying to accomplish for yourself, you know, your professional goals, and more about what you can do for others, you know? And I, of course, you know, encountered that that very moment. And as you'll hear shortly, I, you know, spent quite a bit of time pursuing, you know, career goals. Uh, but then, you know, you look around and say, now what? You know, once you attain those goals, you look around and say, now what? Uh, so throughout my career, there are a few folks who, you know, I've heard through word of mouth, um, haven't necessarily met them, I've heard through word of mouth that I try to keep keep tabs on, try to keep up with to see, you know, how they're doing, how they're progressing, all the far. And, and, and you know this, right? I share this with you. Uh, a gentleman named Devin Bryan. Uh, I've never met this gentleman. i um, heard quite a bit about him. Um, starting with his time at the IRS and, you know, it, everything's been, you know, a very intelligent uh, class act and, and just a good person. So I go online to see, you know, what this gentleman's up to, to try to get a sense for, you know, uh, what that entails. And, and I come across, you know, you know, a few things, right? I see he's changed jobs, doing very well, each job better and better, he's growing, he, he's doing phenomenal. And then I see this, this, this group, uh, I don't think it was called Cybersity at the time, it was, um, uh, international GP. consortium, something uh, to that yeah. minority professionals. And I said, well, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Let's, let's dig a little deeper. Uh, and then I see that there's this, there's this, this event uh, and the event was called a hustlers club. And I thought to myself, okay, what's this all about? It seems kind of dicey. I don't know. I don't know. But then it harkens back to the gentleman in question and everything I've heard of him is class act. There's no way, shape or form he'd associate himself with any foolishness. So, you know, I decided to, you know, you know, take a peek and see what it was all about. And it was at that um, couple of months ago, I think we were actually interviewing him. And it was of course you, uh, the gentleman, Julian, Devin, and just a wonderful discussion. And then, you know, the questions that the folks were asking, 
and then the uh, the younger folks that were showcased. I just thought it was, a, it was beautiful. It was a wonderful, wonderful event and, and beautiful thing that you had put together. So I figured, you know, uh, we had exchanged uh, a few messages, I believe, and, and and I really wanted to see what I can do to contribute. So I figured there's at least had to be one person, um, either just starting out uh, in their career or mid level, who could benefit from from what I learned. And quite frankly, what I continue to learn uh, along my journey. So when you asked me to participate in this interview, I of course said yes. So that's kind of the context of how I got here. And again, thanks to you and the team at Subversity for for what you're doing. So so with that in mind, um, as David mentioned, I serve as the Commerce Citizen and Deputy CIO. Uh, it's a role in which I'm I'm, I'm grateful uh, for. Uh, I've made several sacrifices and, and worked very hard uh, to get here. But uh, I would be remiss. Uh, if I did not, you know, share with you that I did not do it alone. I had a lot of people uh, who, who supported me, believed in me, and told me what I needed to know, not what I wanted to know uh, about where I was at various points throughout my career. So for today, uh, if it's okay, I'd like to focus on my journey, my path, uh, what I learned along the way, in hopes that, you know, perhaps uh, you'll find value as it relates to your professional journey. Again, that's whether you're uh, new to the field and looking to earn uh, an entry-level position or mid-level looking to earn that senior-level position. So uh, if there's one thing, if there's one key takeaway that I have for you is that if you feel that your career is at a standstill, uh, you're unclear on how to move forward, uh, don't know where to turn or what to say, uh, just know that I get it, uh, I understand, uh, I was you, uh, I was there. Uh, that's that's just, you know, cards on the table, I was there. Uh, and the harsh reality is that, you know, many of us, whether we not like to believe it or not, uh, we're a step or two away from being there again. So uh, keep that in mind. So uh, who am I? Uh, I'm a husband, father, uh, hopefully a good neighbor, uh, born and raised in Connecticut. Uh, I've been in this area for about 30 years. Um, growing up, computers, you know, didn't play much of a role in my life. Uh, that trend continued uh, throughout high school and college. Um, believe it or not, I actually wanted to be a filmmaker uh, uh, as, as my first career choice, but the university that I attended didn't offer that as a major. Uh, so instead, I went with uh, mass media arts and television production. Um, as I neared graduation, you know, I did what I thought were all the right things. I, I took unpaid internships. Um, I networked as much as I could to get, you know, what was called gig work um, at the time, uh, doing anything from, you know, Wizards games to Capitals games to uh, spots for local networks and cable stations. Uh, and when I graduated, life was good, right? Um, I achieved the goal that i have been told was essential to survival. I had an undergraduate degree. Uh, so for me, it was no more school. Um, I just purchased my first mobile phone. Uh, and it was ringing. Uh, the work was rolling in, that gig work was rolling in. And I'll never forget that my girlfriend at the time, uh, who's now my wife, uh, mentioned pursuing graduate school. And I simply didn't have the eyes to see or the ears to hear what it was that she was saying at the time. Um, but as, you know, things happen, you know, that would soon change before long. Um, you see, very few people experience any real longevity uh, when you're dealing with gig work, uh, especially if you're a recent college graduate uh, with limited experience. Uh, so naturally, you know, that, that new mobile phone that I purchased stopped ringing. Um, the work stopped coming in and, and the money ran low very fast. Uh, obviously, this was concerning um, for several reasons. I feel that I've been working my entire life. Uh, I remind my kids of this every year when I receive my earnings record from the Social Security Administration. Uh, and I remind them that I've been working for a very long period of time. I won't share the year with you, but uh, they definitely know what year I started working. Um, so to eat, uh, to pay the rent, uh, I took a job doing administrative work uh, in an office, you know, data entry, filing, that sort of stuff. Um, but I also took my girlfriend's advice and applied for and received a loan to attend grad school. Um, and this is another reason why networking is so important because uh, one of her old roommates at the time uh, introduced me to someone who uh, was doing rather well uh, working in IT. And to be honest, I really hadn't paid much attention uh, to IT before this. So I applied for a much smaller loan to attend uh, an A-plus computer repair class. 
uh, initially, uh, I really didn't have a, a real appreciation for uh, the coursework uh, at grad school, but that changed by the second year. Um, however, uh, from the very beginning, I really, really looked forward to the A plus class. It was hands on. It was formal yet informal. It was competitive, and the feedback was was immediate. Either your computer booted up or it didn't. Right? If it didn't, you had to troubleshoot, engage in problem solving, and that's going to be very important this afternoon. And I found that to be very exciting. Um, so uh, it wasn't long before I was going to mark a pro computer show. And for those of you that don't know, it's a place where you can go and buy a lot of computer uh, parts and equipment. Uh, so I was spending my spare money on, you know, extra chassis, memory, hard drive, CPUs uh, to practice at home so that I can hone my, my new craft. Um, as would be the case, a few of my classmates at the A-plus computer uh, class were already working in IT. So with, you know, a little or a lot of badger, and I convinced one of them to introduce me to their project manager. And after, you know, several months, it seemed like several months to me, a persistent follow-up. Um, do you have any openings yet? Is there anything that I can do? Uh, I managed to get my first job in IT working on a help desk. And this is when things really got interesting. Um, like any organization, there are tiers. Um, and I wasn't privy to the fact, at least here, the help desk was viewed in, in low regard. And I can never understand why. I thought we were all on the same team trying to support a, a customer. But, um, you know, the desktop support team would regularly crack jokes uh, about us. And to be honest, it really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, so I spent extra time before and after class at A plus uh, with the instructor. I would pepper you know, him with questions, uh, learn of other resources that were available that I could use to increase my, my knowledge and expertise online and books. Um, I spent a lot of time back then at Borders Bookstore. I think uh, they're no longer in business. At least I don't think they are. And I used my lunch breaks to pick the brains of certain desktop support team members that, you know, weren't as crummy towards us to learn what their job entailed. And, uh, you know, months go by and I finally earn a spot on that team. But what happens next? Uh, the network team, right? They're belittling the desktop team, you know. However, you know, they have a lab, you know, and, and they've got a few racks of equipment, some routers, switches, firewalls, and that lab is barely used. Uh, unless there was an issue or there was some equipment that they're trying to upgrade. No one was practicing in it at whatsoever. So I go into the lab and I see a book. I'll never forget it. It was a uh, routing uh, TCP IP by, uh, by Doyle. That was like the book that you had to read if you wanted to be in networking, uh, Jeff Doyle. And um, I go to Borders, I purchase the book and I just pour myself into it uh, at home. And every lunch break, I was in the lab learning reading other Cisco Press books at the time. And, and about a year later, I was able to switch companies and earn a spot on a networking team. And, and that was big for me. Uh, but then with one client that I supported, I noticed you know, people going to my boss's, boss's office, right? And they looked sharp. I mean, these folks had on you know, suits, top coats, ties, they looked real sharp. And I really liked that professionalism that it portrayed. Because I was coming to work in polo shirts and khakis, you know, I'm spending my time in a lab, you know, doing things like that. Um, my coworkers thought I was a fool, but, you know, I started to come to work in dress slacks, dress shirt and a tie, no suit, but definitely a tie. Uh, and again, my coworkers thought I was losing it, but to me, I didn't want to think like or dress like my current situation. I was always looking forward, right? So around this time, you know, FISMO was front and center, uh, for those supporting federal clients, and our training was more focused on security. Uh, and I remember uh, the need to perform more and more documentation as a result for what we were doing. Uh, and, and, and quite a few of my team members hated it. Uh, but my perspective was, you know, I think they hated it because they weren't fans of documentation because they didn't want to share their knowledge. They wanted to withhold what they knew for, in their mind, was probably job security. I just could never understand that. Uh, I didn't mind the documentation, though. I was actually pretty good at it, quite frankly. And, and for this, I can thank someone that I interviewed uh, in college in a journalism class. Uh, and, and as part of that, you know, uh, he told me two things. Number one, learn how to write. So very important. Uh, and number two, uh, don't suffer from uh, hubris. And 
the writing piece, I understood, right? It made sense to me. But to be honest with you, I'd never heard the word cubish before in my life. It, it completely went over my head. I didn't know what he was talking about. And my facial expression, you know, showed as much. Um, and he shared with me a story that I'll never forget. He mentioned that he had just returned home from an award ceremony where he was honored, uh, received a very prestigious award. And um, he was going on and on about how, how loved he was and, and how he was, you know, this and how he was that. And, and one of his friends, you know, uh, who was there you know, at his home said, you know, you didn't do anything you weren't supposed to. And they said it in a very stern and forceful way that, that resonated with him. And at this time, he realized that he was full of himself. Uh, so, so my key takeaways there were for learn how to write and be humble. Uh, so a few years go by uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm some of you unfortunately may, may have experienced this. Uh, I was laid off from my company uh, and that was a real, real eye opener for me. Um, uh, I managed to find employment that bounced around quite a bit doing network and network security work until I landed a job doing IT security policy work. And, and the more I reflect on things, uh, it probably has something to do with the folks I saw in their suits and ties uh, a few years back uh, in my bosses and bosses' office because um, I always wanted to aspire to be in that upper echelon. I always wanted to be one who called the shots. I just didn't know how to get there. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the television work I did. You see those folks pulling cables, uh, running the camera, setting up lights. Uh, and then you see those people who, who were just calling the shots. They just were telling people what to do. And they always, you know, look like they had their act together. Um, so I'll never forget how excited I was to be writing policies because I thought I arrived, right? I'm no longer, you know, doing the hands-on thing, doing the so-called, you know, you know, low-level work. I'm now in a position to write policy and I'm, I'm rubbing shoulders with, with the upper crust. But a funny thing happened. Uh, one of my first assignments uh, was to directly run the laptop uh, computer uh, for the staff meeting uh, for my client, in which case the respective team members would brief out, they called quad charts, where they stood. And, and to be honest with you, I thought this was pretty demeaning. I, I said, you know, look, I'm, I'm not here to do this. I'm here to write policy and you want me to do this, you know, this administrative work. So, and it entailed chasing people down. Uh, most times people were not too happy to see me uh, because I had to remind them that their charts were due, they haven't provided them and that sort of thing. So, but I did it, you know, I humbled myself and I did it. Uh, and this was, you know, a briefing uh, for the, the sizzle and the deputy sizzle for uh, this particular client. Now, these meetings were run like none other meetings that I've ever experienced before. Uh, the personalities ran the whole spectrum. Uh, what was clear to me, though, is there's a lot of, you know, bobbing and weaving and a lot of cat and mouse at play with, with the people who are supposed to be briefing. Uh, and the sizzle and deputy sizzle will constantly ask, in my view, uh, straightforward questions. Uh, and their responses would be all over the place. After a few weeks, I simply couldn't take it anymore. And when, you know, the, the boss asked one of those, who can tell me what's wrong with this picture type questions, uh, I went for it and I chimed in. Now, you know, my job is just, you know, run the laptop, advance the slides, but I just, I went for it. I figured what's the worst that could happen. Uh, now, remember, I was just a contractor and, and I learned from the days doing admin work uh, when I was, you know, could no longer do television work, read everything that comes across your desk. So as the folks were providing me these quad charts, I was reading them, I, I was taking them in, I was absorbing these slides from week to week, I knew who was doing what and where kind of the pitfalls were. So I was able to see patterns and discrepancies uh, in what was being reported from week to week across the entire organization. Conversely, with respect to team members, they're just focused on their little slice, slice of heaven and not thinking about that bigger picture. So, uh, when I answer, when, when one question was asked, I answered, I'll never forget the deputy uh, sizzle saying in his loud voice and boisterous voice, how is it that Ryan who just got here knows what's going on and none of you do? That did not win me a lot of fans. That did not win me a lot of fans with the people that I was supposed to be reporting. But the good news is I did catch the attention of the, the sizzle and deputy sizzle in a positive way and a year later, I was a federal employee working in IT security. So, so that was a plus, that was big for me. 
So as a first time federal employee and still no real career plan, uh, I became impatient and consumed with, with grades, right? I want this grade, I want that grade. Uh, so I took a promotion at another agency and, and learned quite a bit. Uh, and while there, I took advantage of, you know, leadership seminars uh, and they were invaluable in shaping my thinking. Uh, during these seminars, various individuals would uh, share their leadership journey and provide, uh, in some instances, an autographed copy of a book they had written. And I found these to be fascinating. Um, I also found an executive, sought out an executive I could learn from at this agency. And among other things, he shared with me something that uh, would take me some time to really appreciate. And, and that was two things. Number one, be a problem solver if you want to advance in your career. Uh, and secondly, enjoy the journey. Uh, a few years later, I reconnected with my previous federal employer and stayed in cyber for, for several years, uh, having you know, success in different areas. And things were going well, but, but we all have expectations for ourselves. And um, for me, I thought I could do more. Uh, recalling what had been shared with me uh, about solving problems and enjoying the journey, uh, I knew there are quite a few troubled projects outside of uh, cyber, outside of other staffs. Uh, within our office. Uh, so I took a role outside of cyber for my professional growth. I did this for several years actually with different staffs, each solving problems uh, under each tenure. After this, it's not hard for someone to think that, you know, they're the next one up. You know, when that spot opens up, it's yours. You know, you're kind of gonna get ushered into it. But the reality is um, life isn't fair. Uh, and there's always someone out there that's better than you. That's just the harsh reality. Uh, but with that being said, it should not discourage you um, or deter you in any way, shape or form. I encourage you instead to use that as uh, fuel to propel you. And in my case, you know, I realized I spent the vast majority of, of my federal career in headquarters. So I decided to take a role uh, in the field, again, outside of cyber. Uh, what my friends and colleagues uh, didn't understand was this, I'd served in, in leadership roles for cyber, engineering, budget, finance, workforce, personnel, security, and property, each time solving problems. And that experience uh, was invaluable in, in helping me develop a well-rounded perspective and understand how these organizations operate. Uh, by no means, by no means, am I suggesting that this is what you must do, not at all. I only share this with you for your consideration. Um, but once again, on the advice of my wife, uh, when applying for this position in the field, I also applied for a senior executive position at another agency. Uh, her rationale was simple. Uh, number one, you have nothing to lose. Um, number two, you can only benefit from going through that experience. And, and I've been fortunate enough to serve in this position for the past two years. So um, the key takeaways, I guess, are this. Uh, you can learn something from every job you take, no matter how insignificant you feel it may be at the top. Uh, number two, seek out mentors. Um, they can provide uh, just incredible advice, even if you don't have the eyes to see it or the ears to hear it at the time. Uh, it will all come clear soon enough. Um, also, you know, pivot if you feel stymied or stalled in your career, in your current role. Um, obstacles are part of life, but don't be discouraged by them. But also, I would say, uh, grow comfortable with the uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to move outside of your comfort zone uh, because, you know, there's always going to be those instances in which case you're going to have to, you know, do something different. So it's kind of one of those change now be forced to change later sorts of things. So I hope that helps. I got to come off mute real quick and I got to say this to everyone. You know, um, if you ever wanted to, to, to get a glimpse of, I haven't even asked a question, yet we've got a full, we've got a full, we've got a full knowledge, uh, a real good, clear, full knowledge uh, of, of Brian. Brian, I mean, you've, you, you've been through, a, a, you've been through a couple of things, you've been through a rough patch here and there. Um, all of that, that you bring with you, do you bring that with you to any type of mentoring? I mean, we, we, you know, we had a whole conversation about we're going to do some personal questions, we're going to do some industry questions, and we're going to do some social impact questions, but we're going to mix this up here and just go and have a, a good time having a conversation. How do you take what you've done or what you've learned or what you've experienced and what you've had to 
deal with and bring that to a mentoring conversation, not only with the folks that report to you, but the folks that you have, I mean, we've talked about diversity, but the folks that you are interested in supporting. And, and, and I've got a couple other questions too, but delve into that for me for a minute. Sure. No, I think, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, there's a tendency for some, not all, for some, the farther up you go, you know, you think it's about you and it's not. I think you're only as good as the people, you know, who you have supporting you. Uh, I think you have to take an interest in your folks beyond just what they can do for you. I mean, listen, people come to work every day. They've got stuff going on in their life as well. I'm not saying be nosy and, and get in their business or anything like that, but take an interest. Um, take an interest in your people, um, challenge them in ways that spur their growth. Uh, if you see that they're falling down in a particular area, um, do something to help them you know, grow. Position them for success. And if you know, in your particular organization, they cannot be successful, kind of help them find success elsewhere. I think the, the alpha and the omega is with the people. And I say that because a lot of strategic brands have a tendency to talk about, you know, the technology, to talk about, you know, different investments and things. But there's a lot of work that could and should be done with people that I think we, we miss out on. I think, uh, as, you sh as I've shared with you on several different occasions, you can burn down a home in a matter of moments, right? It doesn't take a whole lot to do that, but build a home takes a lot more. And I think we should be in the business of building up, you know, people, whether you're mentoring someone, whether you're a leader, whether you're a manager or something in between. Um, something else, ask questions, right? Ask those, those probing questions, not the yes, no questions, but the questions that are gonna force people to think, right? Even if they don't have an answer for you right now, you know, perhaps they'll have something to come back to you with. So, I mean, those are just a few thoughts that I have on that. Yeah. Um, and in the process of, of, of mentoring and talking with folks, even, even in your earlier statements, you use the word earn, mm -hmm. earn rather than I got to get in or I got to work my way in, or even I got to break my break into cybersecurity. I'm trying to get, you know, all that, all those terms. Why use the language that you use and what's the benefit of using that language for folks? Is it to help them philosophically be in sync with, their, with what's going to, what they're going to experience? Is it to, what's, why use the words that you use? Because words have meaning. Help us understand that. No, absolutely. Um, words have meaning. Uh, you can use words to, you know, again, break someone down and build someone up. But also words help shape your perspective. Uh, if, if you're trying to, and listen, if, if you're coming from the perspective of you're trying to break in, in, in some respects, that implies you don't belong there. And I would argue that, sure, you belong there, but have you done what it takes to be there? That's where the earning comes into play, right? I think, ultimately, if you want to serve in a capacity, you have to put in the work, right? You have to put in the work. I think, you know, competence is like, you know, job number one. You never know when you're going to be asked to step in or step up. And, and if you're competent and if you know your stuff, then I think you, the opportunity is going to be endless. But if you're just trying to, you know, chip away and, and, and break, you know, it's going to be a little more difficult. I think there are a lot of opportunities nowadays for people, you know, with, with you know, social media, groups like diversity, you know, and the like. I think the opportunities are endless if we just focus on, trying to determine what it is that we're trying to do, commit to actually doing it, putting in that work, I think, I think you'll be fine. Uh, now, is it gonna be instantaneous? Probably not, but you know, is, is anything instant you know, really worth having? I think you know, you're gonna put in that work, there's a lot that you're gonna learn along the way. Some things you're gonna learn along the way that you're not even gonna appreciate until years down the road. But uh, there's no substitute, like I said, for putting in that hard work you know, so that you can earn that position and, and earn your stripes and whatever it is that you profess to hang your hat on. Sure. Now, when you say earn, when you say put in the work, give us an idea. And I know you said earlier, you started your own little home network where you were doing some other things in the lab when other folks weren't doing what you were doing. Give us some more detail. 
be, be a lot more detail about putting in the work and what that really means. Yeah, it, it means, you know, sacrificing. I mean, it, there are 24 hours in a day. I mean, if you profess to be the foremost, you know, you know, engineer, you know, analyst, what have you, what are you doing to sacrifice and put in that work? Are you, are you hanging out with your friends, you know, goofing off or whatever? Are you, are you on social media trying to keep tabs on the next, you know, celebrity or star? Or are you immersing yourself in the work? Are you keeping up the tab on the latest trends, things of that nature? Are, are you well read on the subject matter? Are you practicing? Are you honing your craft, you know, day in and day out? All those things come into play. So you have to so, commit, uh, you have to commit, you have to invest in yourself. I shouldn't so, say far, but on occasion, uh, there are those that want someone to invest in them. But the question is, why should I invest in you if you're seemingly unwilling to invest in yourself? So. Got you, got you. So uh, uh, the, the investment part of investing in yourself, sort of like investing in yourself to become a member of Cyversity or investing in yourself to do anything. I, I hear a lot of folks saying that, and mentees specifically saying that, I'm going to invest in this certification. I'm going to get this certification and that certification and this certification. Help us understand the difference between certifications and skills and help us understand how you see it i mean because you're not you may or may not be the end well you are the end hiring manager because people come and work in your organization they don't get there unless they get through you get past you but how do you see skills development is it a certification or is it actually knowing what you're doing so i think it's a combination of things i think um certifications look uh, they're not going to hurt you, right? I think certifications, there's certainly value in them. But few would argue there's no substitute for knowing what you're talking about, right? For example, if, if someone says, hey, I'm certified in this particular, you know, area, you know, the, the natural response is, okay, wonderful. If you're asked a question or two or three about that area, and you're not able to speak, you know, with authority, on that, yet you're certified, that's gonna raise an eyebrow or two, right? Whereas uh, if you're asked a question or two or three about that particular area, and you know it like the back of your hand, yet you're not certified, well, that's a different situation altogether, right? So I think, you know, certifications aren't bad, but I don't think that certification should be used as a substitute for experience. And, and on, on occasion, you have people who think that it's just about the certification. It's about the experience, understanding what it is that you're doing and, and, and that sort of thing. So. I, can't. I, I was on mute, I'm sorry. Um, you come to this, you know, having your own trials, right? Your own tribulations. And in some cases you come to the, where you are in the process by having you know, come to face your own reality as to who you are and where you are in your development, in your maturation, if you will. I mean, for other folks that are trying to matriculate and become, you know, the CISO of the Department of Commerce or the CIO for the Department of Commerce, uh, what's your advice to someone thinking of developing themselves to be a, a Ryan Higgins? Um, so I start, I would, number one, encourage them to go beyond, you know, Ryan Higgins. Uh, that's number one. You don't want to just, you know, do what I did. I would encourage you to go well beyond, you know, what I have accomplished. Uh, I think uh, there are a few things. Um, competence, we talked about that uh, a short while ago. Uh, I think uh, staying ready, because again, you never know when you're going to get the call. Um, the moment may not be right, uh, the timing may not be right, but you're expected to step up, so you're gonna have to be there. I think self-awareness, I think that's key. Folks don't talk a whole lot about that, but consider this. Um, we spend quite a bit of time showing up our systems, right? Uh, patching, scanning, assessing, implementing controls, things of that nature, quite a bit of time. Um, how much time do we spend on, on ourselves, right? What are the blind spots that we have as individuals, right? 
uh, where are we weak? Uh, do we have the requisite soft skills and things of that nature? So I think, you know, 360s, there's a lot of value in that, uh, making sure that, you know, if there's something in how you're doing things and what you're doing that, you know, rubs people the wrong way for whatever reason, you need to know that so that you can calibrate. You know, for example, I remember during, you know, I felt I was top of the top of the mountain at one point in time um, during during my career, maybe years ago. <clears throat> and, and, you know, I was presented with an opportunity to do a 360. And, and for those of you that I don't know, 360 is where you, of course, provide your view of, 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 of how you are, uh, your subordinates, your colleagues, and your peers do as well, supervisors as well. And, um, you know, the results were, were pretty eye-opening. You know, I thought to myself, wow, this is how I'm viewed, right? Mm. And I would have never known that had I not, you know, uh, embarked on that 360. So I think there's a lot of value in understanding how people perceive you uh, beyond just being kind of a master in your craft. Um, things aren't always going to go your way. That's something else to be mindful of. Uh, but that's life, right? You have to take the good with the bad. Um, afford yourself an opportunity to fume whatever, learn from that, and then move on. Um, read books, uh, read books uh, outside of your particular area as well. That's another one. The benefits are immense, right? You broaden your perspective, increase your vocabulary. Uh, and then again, back to those soft skills, effective communication, adaptability, critical thinking, analysis, uh, and negotiation, to name a few. Uh, and the last, I would say, you know, keep some perspective, right? See things through the eyes of others. Mm. Uh, when, when we're on our career journey, we kind of, we all, we're all guilty of this, you know, present company included, right? We have a tendency to put on the blinders and just go and, and not consider, you know, things, things around us. So, yep. You know, we purposely are staying away from discussing the Department of Commerce for a couple of reasons. One, because, um, uh, of the work that you do has to, uh, to do with the, uh, not only the current administration, but past administrations, but also the work that you do there is, you know, critical to the, to our, to our country's economy. So we've stayed away from that. Uh, I do want to ask a question about your management approach and process. I mean, you obviously, you know, some organizations, they focus and make their investment in technology. Some organizations focus and focus on process. You know, when I talk to people about me, I say the people process technology thing, well, I'm in people, that's where I'm at. How do you prioritize, and I'm trying to word it properly because we don't wanna talk about you know, how you do what you do to focus on and support our administrations or the administration, but how do you prioritize and do you prioritize on people? How do you prioritize them? I know you've spoken about we, you develop them, you grow them. Give me some, give me an example of what you did with a person to help them through their particular journey. Mm. Um, so an example of a person that I help with their particular journey. Um, so how about this? So there's an individual who, who has a goal. Uh, they're trying to, you know, reach a certain level. And, and we've all been there, that's fine. The very first question that I ask is, why do you want to get there? Why do you want this? Why are you pursuing this, right? And, and oftentimes, you know, folks are a little dumbfounded and it's like, well, because, well, because what? It's specifically, why, do you, why, is this, why is this so important to you? Why are you pursuing this, right? And I think that from that stems a whole nother conversation in which case, they realize maybe that's not the goal they want to pursue or becomes, okay, so if that's what you want to get, how are you going to get there, right? If this is what you're pursuing, how are you going to get there? What's your plan, right? And again, that stems another conversation because either they know or they don't know. And it's kind of like vacation, right? You want to go on vacation, you know what hotel you want to stay in, you look up all that stuff, you know what, what attractions you want to go look at, the airline, the rental car, all that's down to a science. But for some reason, when it comes to the career, you know, there's just this, I don't know. And there's this tendency to, not, not for all, but for some to want to rely on others exclusively to help them get there. Now, it's clear that, you know, you're not going to get there by yourself. At least I, I certainly wasn't fortunate enough to get there by myself. I had a lot of people helping me. But, you know, 
treat treat your career in the same way that you would treat you know anything else right take it seriously think it through plan it out and it's those series of questions that i like to ask to get people thinking and i think more so than ever you'll find them coming back you know with with a better a better way forward great listen i'm going to open the floor up i know we're we're, we're I'm gonna open the floor up and see if anyone has any questions. I've got a couple more questions. I wanna remind you to uh, keep your questions you know, as brief as you can. Uh, uh, um, get, the, get to the question and so you can get to the answer. So if anyone wants to ask a question, I ask you to come off mute and um, yep, yeah, come off mute and, uh, and ask a question. Uh, Jason, look like you've raised your hand. Jason, if you don't mind coming up. Yeah, there you go. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Doing That's well. Good. What's your uh, question, Jason? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you again for, for sharing your, your journey because um, I'm kind of going through something similar where uh, I'm doing a lot of gig jobs and I also started off with data entry. Um, I'm currently doing work for the census as a field representative and uh, I've been checking like the USA jobs website for tech positions and I hadn't seen any yet. Um, I was wondering, um, do you possibly know when there'll be more uh, applications that, that'll open? Um, I'm headed to Colorado next month for more training and wanted to see if there was someone I could talk to about that. Hmm. So, so Jason, first and foremost, thank you for your question. Uh, my recommendation would be to, I believe there's a way to set up alerts, to configure alerts on USA Jobs uh, that let you know when a position is being posted uh, based on what it is that you're pursuing. If you haven't done that already, I would encourage you to set that up so that uh, even if you're not able to, to log into the system, you'll get an email or an alert that says said job has been posted. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, along the lines with the... Um, always be ready. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please make sure that your resume is up to date, right? When applying for a federal job, uh, you need to have your resume and a series of other documents up to date. You don't want to be kind of scrambling to pull that stuff together when the job has been posted, right? Because like you, Jason, there's so many other people out there looking for a job. You want to make sure that you can, you know, strike while the iron is hot. So I think between those two things, I would encourage you to keep pressing. Um, and also uh, think about uh, what, what training, what skills, you know, you can kind of take advantage of while you wait, right? So as it relates to the job being posted, uh, think about what you hang your hat on. Uh, where are you weak? Where can you do better? Where can you shore up? While you're waiting, always try to keep busy uh, in whatever it is that you're trying to pursue so that when you do have that opportunity to interview, you can say, Here's what I've been doing. Here's to, to remain current. Here's why. Here's what separates me from the next person in terms of getting this job. So, does that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Jason. Hey, Jason. First of all, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for coming off mute and coming on camera, and for making the ask. <clears throat> right? It, you know, you you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. And you, you make the ask, and at least you get a response. Nothing short of, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Thanks for making the ask. And I'm sure Ryan appreciates that as well. Um, I know the next person up was Serenity had a question. Serenity, Serenity, you typed your question. You should come off mute and ask the question real quick. Sure. So Thank you. Hello, Ryan. So thank you so much again for sharing your experiences. Really, really enjoyed hearing all your advice. It's like little diamonds, nuggets of like wisdom. Um, so I'm wondering, like uh, I'm I'm an analyst and I did make a career change, you know, with the help of Cybersity. Um, and I've been an analyst for about three years now. And I'm wondering what kind of um, like what kind of what would you recommend to somebody who's considering being a CISO? Like, I'm interested in the transition that was really interesting hearing your journey, but how do you go from something like an analyst role, like at an entry level um, level to becoming a CISO? You know, because I've, 
I, I know the traditional way people think it might take years, but I'm wondering along the way, how do you develop those skills that are really um, useful to be a CISO and to even be considered for that? Because I, I'm thinking that um, unfortunately it seems like people tend to think of you in a certain path, right? So how do you, how do you, how do you, what's the best way to um, go through to that path? Right, no, so thank you for the question, Audrey. I don't think there's any best way per se, um, but I would ask the question, why do you wanna be a CISO, right? Okay. right? Right, right, and that's, you don't have to answer that right now, but that's kind of the question, why do you wanna do this, uh, number one? Number two, what do you think the role entails, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, and then number three, uh, ask yourself, based upon why you want to do it, what you think the role entails, have you done anything uh, in, your, in, your, in your past career, in your current, that you feel would kind of help serve as a bridge to get there, right? Because far too often we think that mm -hmm. the roles that we've taken on in the past have no value. The roles that we've taken on in the past cannot contribute to, you know, uh, a CISO, CIO, or whatever role. And I don't think that's the case. I think every job that we do has value and, and can contribute in some respects to the role, uh, some more so than others. But don't don't discount or throw out what you've done thus far. I think you know there are a lot of different competencies one must have in order to serve in this capacity. And I think there's a tendency to focus too much on a select few and to discount the others. Right? I think so. Hopefully that helps. Yeah. Great. Do, do Thanks, you, Ryan. Do, thanks, Serenity. Ryan, do you need to be Omar and AB? I'm coming to you in just one second. Uh, Omar, uh, Ryan, do you do you have to be exceedingly technical to be a CISO? I don't know. Do you? I mean, it all depends. It, again, I, I don't think it's a one size fits all, right? I think you know every agency is different. Every organization is different. I think. I think you need to have an understanding of the subject matter. You need to know what you're talking about. Uh, I think communication skills are overlooked. I think negotiation skills are overlooked. I think uh, you need to be an, an, an active listener, right? Because far too often people lose sight of the fact that as a security professional, you're trying to enable the business, right? You're trying to enable the mission. And it's kind of tough to do that if you if you haven't listened, if you haven't taken the time to understand what the mission is, what the mission of business mm -hmm. wanted to accomplish. So there, there are a lot of different skills besides technical that you need in order to be effective in this and any other role. So yep. understanding the mission, Shamla, who's Shamla Nadu, who's on the line, also often says, skate to where the puck is. Um, find yourself in a line of money or go to where the, where the organization makes money and, and, and place yourself in that realm, understand how your particular skills help um, make that company money or whatever they do. So uh, find yourself in that area. Omar, your question, come on, come on, come on camera, if you will, please. There he is, and he got, he, and he's shaving too. <laughs> Hi, um, again, thank you for uh, sharing your experience. Uh, I just have a question about, uh, I guess, a, sp a specific combination of skill set. Uh, if you think that it's uh, that combination is valuable. So uh, I, I have some experience in the IT field. I've been pursuing some degrees in cybersecurity, but uh, right now I've seen that there is a lot of, I guess, need or uh, increase uh, yeah, need for privacy. There is more regulations. Now we are aware like our data, it's all over the place and we want to protect, uh, I guess, our data. So we're just wondering, do you think that uh, maybe combining that knowledge with more, I guess, law, a law degree, something specific into privacy laws and cybersecurity will be, uh, I guess, a unique skill that you will see as valuable from your point of view as a, as a CISO? Yeah, well, well, certainly valuable. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on with regards to, you know, cybersecurity legislation, right? Um, so a law degree is certainly something that uh, I couldn't see it hurting you. Um, but again, you have to do what's in the best interest of you based upon, your, you know, your financial situation. Uh, there are many different paths to, to any role, right, including the CISO role. 
I, I think the key for you is to figuring out what you're passionate about, what you hang your hat on, uh, what you feel you're, you're most competent towards, and, and, and really pursuing that, like, like nothing else, committing to it, pursuing it. Um, and again, in the same way that I was, I was asking Serenity those questions, you know, what do you think the role entails, right? What do you think it takes to get to that role? And kind of where do you feel you're strong? Where do you feel you're weak? You know, show up your weaknesses and, and continue to hone your strengths. So I think there's a lot of value in, you know, the, in the path that you're pursuing, but ultimately it's going to be your decision to determine, you know, which path you want to take. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, Ankar. I, yeah, I guess it's me. Um, so Anwar, um, so I'm trying to ask you a question. Question. Thank you. <laughs> no, appreciate it. No worries about that. Um, I'm, I have a question. I hope it's not going to be misunderstood from its intent. Um, I just uh, late last year retired from uh, almost a 21 year army career. And in working in that realm, was working alongside a lot of uh, GS civilians, 13, 14, 15, and all that. And um, some of them, for lack of a better term, and not to sound demeaning, uh, just like with some senior uh, military guys, they we used to call them roadies, you know, retired on active duty. Some of them just basically feel like, you know, they're just there waiting for that retirement and to move on. And now I assume in your position, you might be in the SES level and all that, but I'm trying to try my hand now at corporate America for a while before I even entertain again, you know, potentially GS or higher level like work. But at your level, um, how do you see interaction with your fellow government technical folks? Because sometimes we just hear about, um, projects taking longer or costing more of course that's the nature of projects sometimes but like certain you know the government grinds slowly or slower than corporate america and so uh like earlier you mentioned in your career sometimes you know when you try to drive the ball forward uh or know more or learn more um you know some other colleagues might not be amenable to it but if you're like the guy who's trying to drive the ball forward you get a lot of how do you manage pushback or, you know, any competition that's negative and push past the goalposts, so to speak? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, uh, thank you for your service, uh, first and foremost. Um, secondly, quite a few things to unpack this. So in any, in any role, I think something that's oftentimes overlooked is relations, right? Relationships, right? Um, we have this tendency to be in a zero sum game, your way, my way. Uh, but I think, you know, we need to leverage that tension of, of what you want and what I want, leverage that tension in a, in a healthy manner, right? To create that third and optimal uh, solution that perhaps we hadn't considered. Uh, that's number one. Number two, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's important to have that perspective, see things through the eyes of others, right? Uh, you're naturally gonna wanna drive projects you know, forward. And I think uh, I'm very fortunate to have, you know, served and led in, in cyber and engineering and policy and planning so that I can see their world. I can see, you know, what their challenges and what they're faced with, because it's easy for you to be in one office, just throw something over the fence and say, I don't understand why they haven't gotten this done. Well, have you taken the time to understand their world and what they're contending with day in and day out, right? Everyone's contending with something. So, Take an interest in understanding what that is, and from there, try to work to find that common ground. Um, I think, you know, those two things, I think, uh, have been most helpful for me in terms of uh, making sure that you keep a level head and know that, although it may seem this way, not everyone's operating or coming from a bad place. It's just we're all dealing with, you know, our own impediments, our own mm -hmm. challenges. And, you know, there's a, a reluctance, a natural reluctance for someone to want to yield and help someone else without first you know, sacrificing their own, so. Right. Um, they call that social and self-awareness. So if you're aware of yourself and you're aware of your surroundings and the folks that you're working with, then you have a tendency to have some empathy and, and, and when the folks that you're working with. 
Um, Lawrence, I know you've got a question. Hi, thank you for your time today. Uh, just two quick questions. Is, is your current law an appointment that the Senate had to confirm? Or is this one that someone could reach by joining either the Commerce Department or another government agency and just steadily rising through the ranks? And then number two, what books unrelated to the IT cybersecurity field have you found to be most influential on your thinking? Mm. So two good questions. I think the first uh, question is, this is not a Senate confirmed position on uh, my role, if that was your question. And in terms of books, uh, there are quite a few. Um, if I were to put my finger on one, I would have to say, um, so my folks hear me say this from time to time, and I think I touched upon it with the prior gentleman. Uh, and, and disclaimer, I, I am in no way, shape or form promoting this book. I am not, I'm not, you know, hawking this book, not promoting it. Uh, I'm in no way, shape or form suggesting that you go out and buy it. It's just a book that I read that really resonated with me uh, amongst, you know, quite a few others. Um, it's called The Opposable Mind by um, Di Dr. Uh, Roger L. Martin from the Dean of the Rotman School of Management. So The Opposable Mind, so. Okay, great. <laughs> great, Ian, um, uh, Ian, Thank I know you. you have a, oh, I'm sorry, Lawrence. Apologies. Oh, but, oh, not at all. Thank you for your answer. And Thank it's you. Good to, it's good to see you, man. You look a little buff there, dude. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, but fine. Good, good for you, and I hope the family is well. <laughs> hope, I hope the family is well. Good to see you again, sir. Yes, thank you. Great, Ian. Ian, you got a question? I'm sure. Ian Nevis, you can come off of mute and on camera to ask your question to uh, Mr. Higgins, to Ryan Higgins. Oh uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, unfortunately, camera's malfunctioning. But a case, uh, a case, a uh, question. I guess is generally how to. Uh, advance um new to the field and uh, i have uh, brother maybe lofty ambitions of trying to uh, work for the national security services or as per recent uh, inspiration by by david uh, himself uh, maybe being a corporate head and uh, again new to the field i'm also uh rather mm, advanced age being 55 so uh, so i'm curious as to general advice on how to uh, proceed uh, given these uh, two potential impediments, so. Hey, Ryan, before you answer that question, Ian is a scientist. When you get a chance to look at his background, it's, it's his, 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 his skills in other areas are incredibly, um, they're incredibly useful for, for going into uh, cybersecurity. Actually, he's done some research for security for some of the organizations that he's worked for around the world, so. Um, he's at a crossroads. So keep in mind that there's bigger, there are other things that he's been doing that have significant impact on his um, skills and capabilities. Okay. No, thank you. Certainly. I think um, groups like this uh, will certainly help and not hurt you. I think um, uh, networking, getting involved in groups like this, as I shared with the, the few other individuals that uh, ask a similar question. When you say get into the field, what exactly does that mean, right? What, what, what aspects of the field are, look, are you looking to get into? Um, research it, understand what it entails. Uh, determine, you know, with your scientific background, determine whether or not uh, you already have, you know, a few of those, you know, skill sets already that you can leverage and say, hey, listen, while I may not have, you know, 10 of the 10, I've got six of the 10 based upon what I've done prior. And, you know, I have spent a, a considerable amount of time, hopefully, uh, studying and, 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 and brushing up on the remaining four in such that uh, I feel I'm, I'm more than qualified for this. Uh, and again, invest in yourself. I, can't, I cannot emphasize that enough. I was serious as, as all get out when I said I used to go to Market Pro Computer Show and buy those different, you know, you know uh, components of the computer because I wanted to learn the ins and outs of it, right? Uh, if there's a lab, take advantage of it. You know, uh, pursue pursue any and every opportunity you can uh, to get close to this if it's something that you want to, you know, uh, do. So, 
and and don't and don't and there's something that you mentioned. Uh, I believe Ian correct something that you mentioned that that caught my attention. Try not to think in terms of you having an impediment, right? I think you know the power of positive thinking is so very important, right? Um, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, no matter what, uh, don't allow that to deter you from pursuing what it is that you want to accomplish. I think uh, there are enough uh, obstacles in the world uh, mm -hmm. to you know, contribute to that. So if, if it's something that you wanna do, if it's something that you feel you can do, uh, let no one and no thing stop you from, from your pursuit, okay? Great. Understood. Uh, understood. Thank you. Yes, I, I overstated what I said impediment, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, I am concerned, though, uh, about maybe age related issues. Again, uh, uh, I don't know direct knowledge of them, but I infer that uh, that it may be an issue in some cases. But again, I guess one must force forward with a positive can do as a Marine Corps says, uh, mental outlook and uh, and not assume their problems until we actually run up against any that may be. Sure. Good enough. Thanks, Ian. Leron, you got a question. And I hope hey, I pronounced it. Everybody. I hope I pronounced it. Right. Okay? Yep. Yeah, Leron, you got it right. Good. Yes, we can hear so you. So I live in the okay, you can hear me? Yes, sir. You can. Great, great. So good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone's doing good. I'm really enjoying the session today. Uh, my question is, I live in the Bahamas, right? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there aren't too many openings and job postings in cybersecurity. And mm -hmm. I've been studying my for my Security Plus certification for the last six months or so. So I, in the past, when I got my first college degree in computer network and security management, I went to Florida to go to university. And then after that, I got my second degree, a bachelor's, and I got that in New York. So with the fact that there aren't too many openings here, like perfect example, if I go on Google now and I type in cybersecurity jobs in the Bahamas, I found five jobs. When I go on Indeed and I type in cybersecurity jobs, I found 2,000 pages of jobs in Florida alone. So, you know, it's a slight, you know, disconnect in terms of openings here, as opposed to in the US where there's more openings. So what advice would you give to someone who is studying for cybersecurity, knows that there aren't too many job openings here, and I have moved to the States before to get my college degree on student visas, and then I came back to the Bahamas when my time was up. So what advice would you give to someone who is looking to transition not only into cybersecurity, but also in terms of wanting to move to the States and get more hands-on learning and training? Okay, so um, thank you for that question. I think uh, clearly I, I have no uh, awareness or understanding of your financial situation. So I don't want, I want to be very careful not to advise you from that standpoint, but I will say um, as we've seen over the course of the past, you know, a couple of years, uh, there's been a lot more remote work opportunities available. Uh, so in the case of those, those employment opportunities being uh, located in, you know, whether it be Florida or California, I think you mentioned, I guess the question I would have is, is that an opportunity? Have you pursued those in which case it doesn't matter where you work as long as you know the work, right? I think that's something uh, to consider if in fact uh, you, you think it's worth your while. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. Hey, you know, I went before we moved on. I wanted. I wondered if Lewis Pate or Shamla had a question for Ryan. Sure, lady, ladies first. Of course, <laughs> of course. But she may not have a question, so I just put you two on the spot because you're you're operating in the same stratosphere or area that uh, Ryan does. So I wondered if either one of you had a question for him. I, I do have a question. I do have a question for Ryan. So Ryan, you know, would you advise people on this call, what are the characteristics that you look for 
in order to sponsor someone and put your reputation on the line for them? Mm, it's a great question. Um, so one of the, how can I put this? We spend, and perhaps this is human nature, we spend a considerable amount of time um, talking about ourselves, right? Uh, particularly when you're trying to get a job. You want to talk yourself up. You want to uh, make it known to whomever that you're, you're, you're trying to interview with or, or get attention of how wonderful you are. Uh, what I'm interested in, amongst other things, is kind of your shortcomings, right? Where you've fallen down, all right? Because right, wrong, or different, people fall down every day. Uh, on the job. That's just, it's just the nature of the business. Um, I want to learn about where you've fallen down, uh, what steps you took to get back up and what you learned from it. And, and if someone is candid about that, then, you know, that goes a long way with it uh, because that means, you know, they, they're able to be vulnerable, right? They're able to say, I made these, I erred in these ways. Um, here's what I learned as a result. And for that, I'm a better person. And moving forward, you know, I know to look out for that. So that's something that I really like to dig into, you know, when, when I'm looking for uh, someone to be a part of the fold. Uh, can you be candid and forthright about, you know, kind of your shortcomings, professional shortcomings, that is, uh, and, and, and talk through how you learn from it and how you're a better person as a result. Again, there's, there's no shortage of people that want to talk about all the wonderful things that they're doing. That's fine, but there's got to be, you know, a, a crack in that wall somewhere. And I want to know about that crack, uh, how you identified it, what you did to show it up and be a better person as a result. So. Thank you. I hope everyone here has been taking notes. This is how you get someone to support you and sponsor you where they put their reputation on the line for you. Great. Thanks very much, Shamla. Lewis, question from you, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I, I, I really do uh, have a question, Ryan, and it's probably more uh, focused. Uh, I encounter all of the time where uh, when I have to talk to uh, executive level uh, stakeholders, having to uh, translate some of the uh, deep technical uh, issues or concerns into language that resonates with them, uh, and particularly from a business uh, impact perspective. Mm -hmm. Over time, I've developed one or, one or two, but uh, I am wondering if you have any uh, of your own uh, that you might want to share or any books uh, I've been looking around trying to, trying to find, because that is a huge uh, 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 Goliath, Goliath standing in front of me a, a lot of times is, is how, do I, how do I translate uh, you know, cryptography issues or access controls or API interfaces or, you know, why the attack surface needs to be defended and how it does that, all those kinds of things. But they don't necessarily care about that as much as they care about what, what is the impact to the business. Uh, so uh, I think you understand. I see the, the look on your face. So uh, over to you, sir. <laughs> yeah. well, thank thank you. No, I, I really appreciate that question because it's, I'm thinking, through a few particular instances, you know, of course, I won't share that here, but um, you mentioned books and, and absolutely, uh, while there's no one book in particular that I'll mention, it would harken back to my previous comment about read books outside of your discipline, because we have a tendency to just be uh, very, as you said, focused in our world. And we expect people to come into our world. And in reality, if we are to make the most impact, it's incumbent, it's imperative that we go into other people's world, right? I think one of the best ways to show appreciation for one's culture and way of life is to learn it and to understand it. Uh, and that's you know, another reason why I'm glad that I, I spent time outside of cyber early in my career in engineering and policy and planning because you learn their language, right? You learn what resonates with them. So that when you have that conversation, you have full awareness of your world. You also have a good enough awareness of their world, in which case you can bridge that gap, right? Um, I think, uh, you know, we're all familiar with, you know, FUD, which has been used in the past. Uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, there's no place for that. That, that ship mm -hmm. has long sailed. I think um, speaking in terms of, of risk, uh, I think you can always, you know, benefit in, in, from that perspective. You know, people understand risk, particularly those 
in the financial sector uh, and, and, and try not to be an alarmist. I think mm -hmm. there's a tendency for some to just, you know, scream from the mountaintop that, you know, the world will end if we don't do this. That's not going to get you too far, right? You know, how does this impact our business? Number one, do you know the business and how it works, right? Do you understand that, right? So I think those are some of the key, key things that have helped me be successful uh, toward that end. But I will say this, it's not a one and done. I think, you know, you're going to find yourself throughout your career, and I know I'm not telling you something you don't already know, navigating that spectrum of transactional and transformation, right? Of, of being assertive, of being, you know, patient. You're going to navigate that spectrum. And again, mm -hmm, they're going to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tell you when you need to, you know, dig in and when you need to kind of, you know, come back a little bit. So it's knowing how to read a room. Uh, that's key too. knowing how to read a room, knowing when to chime in, when to not chime in, uh, knowing that there's a, a meeting before the meeting and there's a meeting after the meeting where you can get your points across as well. You don't always have to, you know, pounce at that one particular time. So a, a lot of subtleties associated with, you know, conveying the message. So. Thank you. I took a lot of good notes there. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Appreciate the question. Good. Um, Derek, oh, I'm going to come over to you in one minute, Doc Williams. I just wanted to ask this question uh, that came from one of the other folks. Um, what do you find this most challenging about parts of the job that you have, mm -hmm. um, Ryan? I mean, there's a lot. Of, I'm sure there's some challenges, but what do you find this most challenging? Did I take your question, Derek? <laughs> well, come off and have the conversation. Come off mute and have the conversation with Mr. 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 Higgins now. Good afternoon, Mr. Higgins. How are you? Sir, I'm well in yourself. I will not complain. I'm doing quite well. I'm doing even better um, being on this call. And I just want to thank you for joining us today and sharing your experiences and journey. Um, I have two pages of notes. And um, <laughs> I just need Laur Lauren uh, to know that uh, I was getting ready to put in a suggestion for him, which would be to be remote uh, mm -hmm. to the United States. So uh, I, too, have a military background, extensive um, time in uh, in the computer and network field. So when you were speaking about your experiences, I was just going help desk, system admin, network admin, and going up the channel. But my question for today is since your time at the Department of Commerce, um, as the CISO, what have been some of, or still are, some of your greatest challenges and how did you solve them? And my question is respective to dealing with those other organizations that you also talked about. You got to go into them and find out what they do and how they do, because uh, that's where I've had most of my success in my career. Right, right. No, I appreciate the question. So uh, a little context. Uh, I joined uh, at the height of the pandemic, right? Uh, everything's remote. So, you know, typically when you join, you can make the rounds, you know, just happen to be walking by someone's office, sit down, have a casual conversation. Um, I was not afforded that opportunity, right? So um, I think culture is key. Uh, I forget who said it, but it's, I don't know, culture, eat strategy for breakfast, something like that. Yep. Uh, it was a challenge, not in a negative sense, but a challenge in terms of coming to the organization in learning the culture in short order, right? Every organization has a culture that's woven into the fabric of its DNA. And it's, and it's so very important that we don't run into a situation where we came from, let's just say organization A, we've had success there, and we're gonna bring that same you know, recipe to organization B and just bolt it on and say, this is where we're gonna do it for now. It's not gonna get you anywhere. It's gonna get you a lot of hate and discontent. So um, learning the culture, you know, remotely, you know, was, 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 was the challenge only because I'm so accustomed to, you know, the handshaking, you know, the meeting in the office and just going out for, you know, lunch, coffee, whatever. Um, you overcome that by, you know, leveraging the tools and the technology that you have available, right? You've got, you know, the collaboration suite, you know, you've got the good old phone. Uh, you sit down and you get to know people. Uh, you afford them an opportunity to kind of share uh, what it is that they're faced with in terms of challenges, what they're looking to accomplish, how they perceive your organization, what they would like to see out of your organization. 
how how they feel you can best support them. I think you know that that, that servant mentality I think goes a long way. You're there to serve uh, these people. You you know you may have a title, you may have a role, you may have the executive and all that, but at the end of the day, you are serving the public. You are serving these people. It's so very important to keep that in mind. Uh, I think uh, another challenge is the obvious one. I mean, you know, uh, people are trying to, uh, how can I put this? You know, the adversary does not sleep, right? It, it's nonstop. And, and you're never going to have, you know, all the resources that you need. You're never going to have all the people that you need. You're never going to have all the so achieving that balance of making sure that, you know, you're taking care of what needs to be taken care of, you know, at the moment in time, while also not allowing yourself to be kind of bogged down in the tactical and affording time and space for that strategic, right? Because if you're not talking about, if you're not having a conversation about where you're going and more importantly, why, you're just firefighting, right? You're just firefighting, right? You need to have that kind of... Uh, how do we make the world a better place? How do we get there kind of discussion so within your organization, so. Great, great. Great, Derek, I'm sure, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that that answered your question sufficiently. So on mute, Derek. You're still on mute. I'm gonna move over I to- I apologize, I just wanted to say thank you. That um, answered my question. Appreciate you uh, coming on and, and sharing with us today. Thank you, know, sir. I don't know if you guys have the same view that I have, but on my screen, the top row um, to the left has three black guys with glasses that look alike. <laughs> that's, that's, Randy, a good, that's a good thing. I, I would say, I would say as well. Randy Phillips, I know you asked a question earlier. Do you want to come off and ask that question? No, uh, sorry, I, I have no video. I'm, I'm driving back from Florida right now. Uh, but I, I just want to say thank you, uh, Ryan, uh, uh, for your advice and hearing your story. It was awesome. Uh, Serenity asked, uh, asked my question, so um, I'm good. And um, someone asked her second question. So um, like I said, um, I really enjoyed today. And um, thank you for all the great advice. Yeah. Ryan, you just, I do that often, Ryan. I interject when I should wait. It's an impulsive, it's impulsivity. I think it's a, I think it's a, um, I think it's a positive rather than, rather than a negative. So, <laughs> so. Um, but Ryan, it, you know, it's been great to have you here. I, before we close out, does anybody have any questions? I know Rhonda was here, but she had to leave. Trennis, uh, Carlos, uh, you have a question, Carlos? There we uh, go. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Seattle. Man up in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> yeah, enjoying the sun in Seattle. Um, quick question, um, Ryan. I've heard Shamla and David uh, mentioned before, follow where the money is in the career, uh, be a problem solver. And you mentioned that also. How do you, what steps do you recommend or how do you recommend somebody um, to do that? Like, do you recommend like a one-on-one -on -one with a manager and asking like, you know, what issues can we help with or um, what exactly? So I think there are many different ways you can approach it. I think for me, I always wanted to, uh, how can I put this? Poke my head into other offices, other shops, right? Hey, what do you guys have going on, right? What's going on in your area? Talk to people, uh, get out of your, your, your little circle, get out of your, you know, little click, talk to others. I think there's a tendency for us to stay within pockets. We can get a little compartmentalized. I think, you know, have a conversation with folks, get to understand, you know, what's going on in their particular area. Uh, and from there, you know, you can kind of just keep pulling that thread, find out who their managers are, who their team leads are, and, and figure out how you can help them, you know, uh, solve that problem. Uh, and, and if you feel confident and comfortable enough, like I said, take that detail. Take on assignments outside of your, 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 your current role and skill set. I think there's a lot of benefit. There's a lot of value. Uh, it'll grow your perspective. It'll grow your skill set. And it'll grow your, uh, your, how can I put this? It'll grow your, your, your credibility within the organization as well. For example, if, if you're walking around, Carlos, correct? Yeah, Carlos. 
Carlos, if you're walking around your organization with a t-shirt that says, Carlos is the man, people are gonna look at you like, you know, what's with this guy, right? <laughs> right? But, yeah. but imagine a situation if others within your organization, offices outside of yours, different, you know, girls are walking around with a t-shirt that says, Carlos is the man. That's a different conversation altogether, right? This question is, why are you wearing that t-shirt? Well, Carlos helped me solve this. Carlos helped me do that, right? That's a different proposition altogether. So, you know, we, 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 we pump ourselves up and inflate ourselves. And you have to do that sometimes. But I think if other people are singing your praises based upon you helping them solve problems, I think that will propel you forward uh, a lot faster, so. Sounds good, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Carlos, man, thanks for coming today. Trinis. What's up, Dave? Hey, man, how are you, Ooh, sir? My hand. Good to see you, brother. Little brother, yes, sir. Hey, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I would like to ask the question of, because uh, I have a coworker currently, and he's trying to get into cybersecurity seriously, and uh, he's really trying to decide what's the best um, approach for his um, offensive or defensive, and what what is you guys looking for for his like GSs? Like, what's what's more important currently? Well, first and foremost, I'd ask as I've asked before, why does he want to get inside? Me? And it's okay for him to say, "Look, I'm just trying to make some money. I'm trying to feed myself. That's probably fine, right?" Um, that's number one. Number two, it all depends upon which organization you're pursuing, right? It's like, there are, it's, it's, it kind of harkens back to a question David asked earlier when, he, when I think he was alluding to where would you spend your money? Would you spend it on people? Would you spend it on processes? Would you spend it on technology, right? It all depends upon your current situation. You could have a situation where you've got some very sharp people that are training up to date on the bleeding edge technology, but your technology is legacy. Naturally, you'd want to invest more in technology, right? However, what if you've got a situation where, you know, you've got uh, modern technology, people are trained, but your processes, you've got a single point of failure. So you probably put a little more money in there. I think what, what I would recommend your, your friend do is instead of trying to figure out what they're looking for, nail down what he wants, right? Because if you're steadily trying to fit into what people are looking for, then you're kind of following that trend. What is he passionate about? What's going to get him out of bed in the morning and say, I cannot wait until I get to the work, until I get to the lab or, or to the library or whatever to start practicing reading and doing this. I think follow your passion. What is it that's going to really just, you know, get you up and running each and every day? Because if you're just focused on kind of what people are looking for, then you run the risk of you may get a job, you may have a, 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 an entry level position in cyber, but are you happy? Do you appreciate in life what you're doing? And life is too short, so. I agree with everything you said. Um, he said he wanted to be like a consultant for a government. So I think he wanted to be like a um, contractor consultant with the government. So that's the reason why I asked. And um, when I return back to work on Monday, I'll tell him that. Yeah. Great. Thank, you for, the Thank you for coming in. No, thank you for coming and speaking on so many different things. Just, I'm sure plenty of people have plenty of jewels from this and, you know, definitely from the GS side of things, it's, yep. it's definitely good to hear your perspective. And um, like I said, that was just one of my coworkers. I probably have like two or three more that's really like trying to climb the ladder on the cybersecurity field and the GS side. So yeah, thank you for everything. My pleasure. Thank you. No doubt. Turn him into a mentor, no matter what. <laughs> Thanks, Trinis. Hey, so uh, I know we had another question. Uh, we're almost at time here. Um, Derek or Doc wanted me to ask Ryan the name of the book again that you mentioned earlier. You mentioned a couple of books, but uh, the Imposable Mind. Imposable. The imposable. The, the Opposable Mind. The Opposable, opposable Mind. Right. So listen, Ryan, first of all, you know, I really got to thank you for giving us some time today, uh, giving us a real opportunity. Shamlis is in the, in, the, in the chat. This was a phenomenal session. 
thank you for sharing so much wisdom. And um, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to, to speak with you. It was a real good conversation because it didn't have to be anything uh, you know, formal or anything of that, that nature. We just had a nice conversation and people learned a lot about you, learned a lot about your journey, learned a lot about your expertise, your skill, and how you see the world uh, through your own lens and how you see serving uh, through your own lens. And I think this was, uh, was, uh, was just awesome. Um, any question for, for me or for us? You got a question no, for us? A, and I think Sean was no, not a question for you, uh, but a comment. Um, you know, thank you to you and your entire team at Cyversity for, for what you're doing and providing a forum uh, for people to uh, share uh, and for people to learn. Uh, and again, I cannot emphasize this enough to, you know, your members, uh, particularly those who are looking to, you know, earn a position, uh, entry level or earn that, that senior level position. I, I, I get it. I know I have, I have an appreciation for what you're dealing with. I have an appreciation for what you're going through. I've been there, but uh, I cannot emphasize enough. Don't, don't give up on yourself. It's something that you want to do. Keep pressing, keep plugging, uh, leverage forms like this. Uh, stay well read on, on what it is that you uh, aspire to do, but also read other things. Don't just focus on, you know, uh, this stuff. Uh, there's a whole, whole wealth of information and knowledge out there that is at our fingertips uh, we need to do a better job of taking advantage of it so and and also life is short enjoy yourself have fun you know spend some time with with those who you love uh because you know you don't know when you're going to see them again okay Thank you, Ryan. David, you're on mute. You know, and I just get going too, Derek. <laughs> I just get going. But today we've been talking with Ryan Higgins. He is the CISO for the Department of Commerce and the Deputy CIO for the Department of Commerce. A great, incredible conversation. This is going to be on tape um, and on, on demand on Cyversity's website. You'll be able to get it there. Just wanted to let you guys know that the upcoming sessions that will be coming up uh, as I mentioned, um, you can see Kiana Hicks is going to be next month. The month after that, and Kiana is going to have a special moderator. It's going to be Serenity Small, so please come and hear Serenity speak and, and, and interview that interview um, Kiana. Uh, in the month after that, uh, it's going to be Heather Gant Evans. She's a CISO from SailPoint. Um, if you really want to hear some extremely um, direct as we did today, some direct and poignant conversations about coming up through their process, their life journey to become a CISO at a company like SailPoint. Uh, come and listen to, um, in August, uh, Heather Gant Everidge, serious, serious conversation, serious uh, discussion. Also, as I mentioned in September, it's Guillermo, Diaz, he's the chairman of the Hispanic Information Technology Council. This is going to be a great conversation. I'll tell you uh, that there is so much that um, bedrocks us or foundationalizes us between our culture and cultures, and of course, uh, uh, our, all, all of our journeys as we move uh, in unison toward um, a completion, accomplishment, fulfillment, and Guillermo will, will share some of the things that he's seeing in the Latino community that, that obviously um, replicate and are sim similar, if you will, in, the, uh, in our, our minority communities, right? And of course, uh, as I was mentioning, William Shepard, who was on earlier, is going to guest moderate a conversation with, uh, with uh, Danielle DiSolo. Um, again, uh, thank you for attending. Try to tune into. Try to tune in for that Jan June 9th, 29th conversation with cyber investigations and incident response. Uh, good conversation with another one of our, our branches that serve our country, the FBI, and also um, a partner from Jed Wells. Uh, if we don't have any more, uh, if we don't have any more questions or anything, I'm going to stop sharing here and say thank you to everyone for coming. 
Ryan, as always, uh, sir. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, and I'll be, Michael Connor, it looks like you had a question just before we about to leave. Come, come on out, Michael, and ask the question, please. Oh, he left already. No, 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 I'm here. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I'm saying Ryan left. <laughs> oh, Ryan left already. Oh, man. Hey, but listen, okay. we've, got some, we've got some stellar people and some serious, serious leaders on this call, so ask your question. Yeah, well, hey, hey David, I, I, I got in the, the, the chat late, but I just wanted to ask, I am uh, trying to break through um, into cybersecurity and I, I did want some advice. I'm actually taking a cybersecurity course uh, with my current employer, uh, Walmart, which I know is, um, you know, has a very big opportunity uh, for tech in their Walmart Global Tech. And mm -hmm. I just wanted some, um, just some insight as to how can I, you know, make that transition after I gain this uh, certificate at least. Yeah, I think I think anybody that I know will say Rob Duhart <laughs> first. Oh uh, wow, Rob, and I I Rob definitely Duhart. okay, I absolutely connected with him. I randomly sent him uh, a message. I want to say about a week or two ago, and he was very timely and prompt getting back to me. Absolutely, um, and because Rob Duhart is definitely timely and prompt. Um, Shamla Lewis. Any any suggestions for Michael O'Connor? I always defer to people who know much more than me. Okay, I know, and well, I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael, here's one piece of advice I would give you. It's not the certification that matters as much. It's what's the content you're going to learn, and okay. and and then and then how do you play the content back to someone to demonstrate? that you learned the content, not just through exposure, not just through theory, but actually through practice. So okay. I would say, learn the content, then try to apply it somewhere, video re record yourself, um, or do a demo, do some show and tell. That's the okay. best way to demonstrate that you know what you've learned and that you can actually apply it and that they will get value from having you in their teams. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Lewis, you lead people, a lot of them. <laughs> Take off mute here. Yes, one, wonderful advice from Shamla. I agree with that. Uh, I don't think we can overemphasize uh, going into an area where you've identified you really care about. And that, right. word, passion, that word passion comes up again. Mm -hmm. you, uh, a lot of folks inside, I, uh, I lead a sock. Uh, and it's growing, as, as you can imagine, right? Cybersecurity is growing. And uh, I find myself uh, often interviewing people coming into the organization or moving up in the organization or upskilling. But that passion will shine through. So even the certification, the content, like Shana was saying, that's important. But you, uh, uh, one of the things that will always shine out is when you're in an area in cybersecurity that you're really passionate about and you care about. And that's going to take a little bit uh, uh, of exposure. That's going to take a little bit of devoting time, looking into the different areas. If you don't mind, which certification are you taking right now? Well, I'm currently taking the cybersecurity certification with Thinkful, and I'm also taking a network, uh, network secure, a uh, network plus uh, with ITV Pro TV. I'm just uh, looking at the videos. Okay. And you're taking you're taking network plus because you've identified that you really like the networking side or it was just kind of the first one you got your hands on? It was pretty much the first one that I've gotten my hands on. I, I, I love, I love tech. I love cybersecurity as well. Um, it's one of the first things I was exposed to, uh, but I don't have a niche as to like my passion. And I, like you just said, Mr. Lewis, that it's, it's something that does come with time. Okay. Uh, I will take, uh, I'll offer to um, take it offline a little bit as well and, and kind of talk to you. I've got a series of questions I'd like to ask and just to try and help uh, help you kind of focus on, on that. And I think that would be a bit more constructive than just kind of the general. General is, is good, but um, uh, feel free to, to reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. Is that okay? Absolutely, yes. That is absolutely fine. 
you are you are on you are on LinkedIn, right, Lewis? You can reach you easily yes. there, or do you want to put your uh, LinkedIn? In? Just yeah, a, he's on LinkedIn. Is better. Good, right. good, good, good. Okay. So, guys, yeah. look, it's been great. I had a great time. Thank you for coming, um, Doc. Thank you for coming, Lawrence, Omar, Trennis, Laron, Chris, A, Zalea, Ian, Thank Jason, you. Craig, Serenity, and so many others that have gone, and Shamla, of course. Uh, as we back, as we say back in Brooklyn, Shamla's my a spoon coon. That's my. <laughs> she's my ace. She's my ace. And uh, so, look, thanks guys for coming. Um, I'm on. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Ping me there if you need to to to, to connect with any of us. And um, absolutely, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks everybody. Bye everybody. Have a weekend. Thanks everyone. Hey, Enjoy I cue the I cue the leaving music. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mercy. <laughs>